This movie explains a bit of monster lore that we all know but don't always know why. Details to come. Your father was Frankenstein, but your mother was the lightning. Hello to all the classic people that are returning. I'm glad you're back. I want to welcome any new visitors and let you know that there will be spoilers ahead. Today on Classic Movie Review, we are taking on The Ghost of Frankenstein, 1942. I'm excited to fill this hole in my early monster film reviews. Chronologically, this movie is the fourth in the series and occurred following the events in Son of Frankenstein, 1939. At the end of Son, the monster falls into a pit of molten sulfur. There is no way possible for the monster to survive this boiling. Unless, perhaps, the popularity of the character and money to be made. Not as well made as the previous three movies, The Ghost of Frankenstein 1942 is a pretty good horror flick. I believe Bride of Frankenstein 1935 was the best, followed by Frankenstein 1931, which was certainly the creepiest, Son of Frankenstein 1939, then today's film, and all the others. The Ghost of Frankenstein 1942 has a fairly low 6.1 rating on imdb.com. On RottenTomatoes.com, the film has a 75% on the tomato meter and a 41% audience score. I'm surprised the audiences didn't like this a little better. Early actor, original Keystone Cop, and director of 46 films, Early C. Kenton directed today's film. Kenton directed an impressive set of horror films. These movies include Island of Lost Souls 1932. Bella Lugosi is amazing in that one. Today's film, The Ghost of Frankenstein, 1942, House of Frankenstein, 1944, House of Dracula, 1945, and The Cat Creeps, 1946. Bosley Crothers of the New York Times declared that the thought of Frankenstein's monster returning in another film following The Ghost of Frankenstein, quote, the thought that he may return for further adventures with his body and Lugosi's sconch fills us with mortal terror. That is the most fearful prospect which the picture manages to convey." Unquote. I guess he didn't like it. Actors. They went all out for casting Ludwig Frankenstein slash Ghosts of Henry Frankenstein, casting master stage and screen actor Cedric Hardwick. Hardwick was first covered in a nice film noir, Lured, 1947. The great wolfman Lon Chaney Jr. was in the monster's role, allowing him to create a trifecta as the Wolfman in The Wolfman 1941, as Dracula in Son of Dracula 1945, and today's film as The Monster. Cheney was first covered for his signature role in The Wolfman 1941. Lionel Atwill returned as Dr. Theodore Bomer, who taught Henry Frankenstein how to create life but was left uncredited and disgraced. Atwill was first covered in The Son of Frankenstein 1939 as the one-armed Inspector Krogh, Bela Lugosi was reduced to the role of Igor. He did get a lot of screen time and was the main character. This great portrayer of Dracula was first covered as the Gypsy Bella in The Wolfman 1941. Evelyn Ankers was cast as Elsa Frankenstein, daughter of Ludwig Frankenstein, Cedric Hardwick. Anker was first covered in the role of the Wolfman's love slash bite interest in The Wolfman 1941. Ralph Bellamy played Eric Ernst, prosecutor and boyfriend to Elsa Frankenstein, Evelyn Ankers. Bellamy somehow seemed out of place in this movie. He was also first covered in The Wolfman 1941. The original Dr. Henry Frankenstein, Colin Clive, was used in uncredited clips. Clive was first covered in The Bride of Frankenstein 1935. Dwight Fry was uncredited as one of the villagers. He was also seen as Henry's assistant in an uncredited clip. Fry was also first covered in Bride of Frankenstein 1935. This was the first movie for great tough guy actor William Smith. Many people think he was the head of the Bully Boys, but he's not. He was actually seen behind Closteen's father in one of the close-ups and he's very recognizable. With a very interesting name for a horror actor, Janet Ann Gallo was cast as Closteen Hoosman. She was the little girl befriended by and later kidnapped by the monster. Gallo was born in California in 1937. She was in six movies filmed between 1942 and 1946. In later years, she regularly appeared at horror conventions. 
She is quoted as saying that Lon Chaney Jr. was a gentle giant and a very sweet man. Yalu died in 2020. My new book has just come out. It's called Mystery of the Cave. It's book two in the Michael Potts Archaeological Mystery Series. It follows Michael and the crew up in Alabama as they get into a little adventure up there while they're working in a cave. It's about 200 pages long and fairly easy read. Think you might enjoy it? There's links below. Story. This movie begins with the folks of the town of Frankenstein complaining to the Burgermeister and City Council that there's a curse on the town because of the Frankenstein family. There's a curse on our village. The curse of Frankenstein. None of the other villages like them. Nobody visits their town and there's no food for the children. The Burgermeister says the monster fell into the sulfur pit under the castle. Dr. Frankenstein shot Igor, Bella Lugosi, multiple times, so he's dead too. One of the villagers reminds the council that Igor was once hanged and didn't die. Next, Igor is shown sitting in the castle basement, playing his horn for his friend, the monster, who is buried deep below in the sulfur pit. The mob of citizens say there will be a new burgermeister at the next election if something isn't done, moved by their logic. The burgermeister grants permission for the villagers to destroy the Frankenstein castle. Two points. Shouldn't they want to save the castle so they can cash in on the tourist trade? And secondly, wouldn't it be best to wait until daytime to go to the castle? The mob runs into the night with a plan to blow up the castle. Armed with torches and dynamite, no pitchforks, Igor sees the villagers coming a mile away. As they attempt to plant the charges, Igor pushes large stones from the battlement towards the crowd. The mob manages to set some charges and begins blowing the castle supports. Igor flees into the castle's depths as the mob continues their destruction. An explosion knocks Igor to the ground, but when he recovers, he sees the face of the monster, Lon Chaney Jr., protruding from the hardened sulfur. Happy that his friend has survived, Igor breaks the living monster from the rock. Igor leads the weakened monster out of the castle and into a cemetery. They see the castle fall before heading into the countryside. Lightning begins to strike, and the monster runs towards the bolt, holding his hand skyward. Igor tries to stop the giant. Finally, a lightning bolt hits the monster, and he becomes recharged. Igor understands what he must do. Your father was Frankenstein, but your mother was the lightning. Igor says they will find Dr. Henry Frankenstein's second son, Ludwig, Cedric Hardwick, and have him restore the monster to full power. The pair travel to the village of Viseria, where Ludwig runs a clinic for people with diseases of the mind. Ludwig is conducting surgery with the help of his two assistants, Dr. Theodore Bomer, Lionel Atwell, and Dr. Kittering, Barton Yarborough. Today, they have removed a mental patient's brain, repaired it, and replaced it back in the living patient. They reference a failed experiment by Dr. Bomer. Ludwig states that although the experiment failed, it pointed medical science in the right direction. Dr. Bomer calls this mistake a slight miscalculation. He also says that he was the teacher then and Frankenstein was a student. The monster and Igor enter Viseria in broad daylight and are divided by a flock of geese. The lovely goose girl, Janet Warren, answers questions for Igor, telling the town name and where Dr. Frankenstein lives and works. Igor says he knows the doctor, his brother, and his father very well. The monster has wandered away and sees a small girl, Klostein Hoosman, Janet Ann Gallo, being bullied by some boys. The monster picks up Klostein and climbs towards a rooftop to retrieve her ball. One villager tries to stop the monster and is knocked down the stairs. The girl's father chooses not to attempt a rescue. Another man climbs up to where Klostein and the monster are and the monster knocks the man to his death. Is that your shot, Hussman? Yes, yes. As Igor watches, Klostein relays from her father to bring her down and no one will harm the monster. The monster does his ass and Klostein is safe. The police and the villagers proceed to beat the monster to a pulp. Elsa Frankenstein, Evelyn Ankers, the daughter of Ludwig, is reading in the garden of their home. Elsa's boyfriend, town prosecutor Eric Ernst, Ralph Bellamy, arrives in a carriage and needs to speak with Ludwig. 
Ilsa takes Eric to her father. Ludwig approves of Eric. Eric tells that the monster has already killed two villagers. He is worried that if the monster breaks free from his chains, there could be a lot of mayhem. Ludwig begrudgingly agrees to visit the prisoner later. Eric and Elsa leave the room shortly before the maid, Martha, Doris Lloyd, announces that a visitor from the town of Frankenstein is waiting in the outer room. Ludwig instructs Martha not to tell Elsa about the visitor. Ludwig enters the room to find Igor hiding in the corner. Ludwig is shocked that Igor is alive. Igor tells Ludwig that he must take possession of the monster and restore his power. Ludwig doesn't want to do it, but Igor threatens to expose the family history. Ilsa sees Igor as he's leaving. Ludwig takes the time to pull his brother and father's journal off the shelf near his desk. Ilsa comes in and asks about the strange visitor. Ludwig keeps quiet about Igor's identity. In the town, the monster is chained to a chair in the courthouse. Eric is getting ready to hold a hearing, and a large crowd of villagers is in attendance. Ludwig has not yet arrived when the hearing begins. Eric asks questions, but the monster does not reply. The judge asks that Klostein attempt to talk to the monster. Her father protests, but the little girl walks right up to the monster. Ludwig arrives, and Klostein's father pulls her away. Eric calls Ludwig to examine the monster. The monster recognizes Ludwig and gives a very slight smile, but Ludwig tells the court that he knows nothing about the monster. The monster frowns. The monster rips the wooden chair apart, freeing himself. Okay, don't chain monsters to wooden chairs. The monster pushes through the police and is about to kill Ludwig when he hears Igor playing his horn and is redirected. The pair jump into a wagon and flee the town as a mob of villagers give chase. They are the same villagers that cleared the courthouse in fear a few moments prior. Later that night, Ilsa is in her father's study, reviewing the unique family record books. Of course, there's a lightning storm sparking outside. As she reads a journal, scenes of Dr. Henry Frankenstein, Colin Clive, and Henry's assistant, Dwight Fry, are shown as they steal bodies and as they prepare the monster for life in the laboratory. It's always nice to see the old equipment sparking along. Ilsa finishes reading as the monster is unwrapped. A flash of lightning reveals the monster and Igor outside the window. <coughs> Elsa closes the curtains instead of running out of the room as I would have. She freezes with fear as her father opens the door. She reports what she has seen. Outside, Igor repeatedly tells the monster to break the door down by saying Frankenstein, Frankenstein, Frankenstein. As soon as they enter the hall, in a stroke of really bad luck, Dr. Kitterin walks into the corridor. So he's dead. Igor leads the monster away before Ludwig finds the dead body. Elsa arrives just in time for the monster to come back around the corner and grab her. Like Klostein's father, not trying to rescue his daughter, Ludwig jumps into a room. He bolts the door, leaving Ilsa and the monster on the other side. Holy cow! Ludwig has the entire building plumbed for gas distribution. He turns the gas on outside of his room. The dead Dr. Kittering is out. Elsa falls. Igor is overtaken and falls. And after a bit of stumbling around, the monster goes down last. Ludwig turns on the exhaust fan and clears the gas away. Ludwig calls for Dr. Bomer. The two men carry Elsa to safety. Bomer is shocked to see Dr. Kittering is dead and Igor and the monster asleep on the floor. Ilsa wakes in her bed as Ludwig and Martha watch over her. She's a little freaked out, but Ludwig says, we just need to work through this. Yeah, let's work through this problem. We just need to work the problem. Ludwig talks to Elsa about the family legacy. He vows to find a way to protect his family. Ludwig has the monster, which escaped from chains earlier, attached to the operating table with leather straps. Of course the monster breaks free and almost gets him. Bomer comes in just as Ludwig gives him a said a give, said a give. Ludwig wants to destroy the monster by taking it apart one piece at a time. But you know what else would work? Taking off his arms and legs. Bomer is now concerned about the ethics of killing a living thing. Ludwig hits the family journals as he prepares to operate. The ghost of Henry Frankenstein, played by Hardwick, comes and tells that the only problem with the monster is that it was made with a criminal brain. Abby something or other. The ghost suggests using another brain, say that of Dr. Kittering, 
Ludwig calls for Bomer and begins charging the electrodes. Igor hears the machines and knows Ludwig is working on the monster. Igor and Bomer arrive at the same time. Ludwig announces that they will give the monster Kettering's brain. Igor doesn't want his friend to be destroyed. You're going to give him life? Yes. Not for the purposes that you think, Igor. I'm giving him another brain. Igor makes a case that his broken, bullet-ridden body is no good and his brain should go in the monster. Ludwig says he would never put such a sly brain in a giant's body. They go to work charging the body to make it strong enough for surgery. It was a very nice showing of electrical gadgetry. Elsa is having a breakdown as her father works on the project. Ludwig is sure the monster will no longer be a problem. Bomer comes in and they decide to operate that night. Under one of the machines, there is a stairway to a secret dungeon with another hidden room inside. In the smaller room, Igor is trying to get the monster on board with the brain replacement. The monster heads towards Ludwig with his arms raised as if to kill Ludwig. Instead, he pats the doctor on the shoulders. Later, Igor uses his power of persuasion, flattery, and bribery to convince Bomer to use Igor's brain for the monster. Igor says he will live forever, and he and Bomer will be great leaders. In the evening before the surgery, Eric and the police arrive looking for the monster and Igor. Eric wants to search the house. Ludwig says he will not be welcome later if he does that. Eric then asks to speak to Dr. Kettering. Ludwig says he left earlier in the morning. They know he is lying and begin to search. The super police find the secret stairway and all go down to the dungeon. Super cop finds the entrance to the secret room. They go inside, but no one is inside. The monster walks into town and kidnaps Klostein. She smiles and just goes along with the monster in a beautiful example of natural selection. Igor plays his horn to recall the monster. The monster takes her ball along, but accidentally starts a fire that destroys the girl's house. Bomer is upset that Igor and the monster went out. The monster wants Klostein's brain, and he almost kills Igor as they argue. Ilsa is leaving to find Eric when the monster walks in with Klostein. He makes signs that he wants the small girl's brain. The monster turns Klostein over to Ludwig. Ludwig passes the child to Elsa, and she and the girl escape the monster. Bomer prepares to remove the brain of Igor, but Ludwig thinks he is removing Kettering's brain. Ludwig goes to work removing the criminal brain from the monster. Igor accepts that he may die in the transfer. Near midnight, Bomer arrives with Igor's brain. The two doctors go to work putting in the brain. In the morning, the monster is still asleep. Ludwig thanks Bomer for his assistance and skill. He tells Bomer that this may bring him the recognition that he deserves. Bomer must feel like a jackass knowing he is about to get busted for the switch he made. Two weeks after the surgery, Klostein's father tells a mob of torch-wielding villagers that his daughter may not have died in the fire. He says she was stolen by the monster. The villagers decide only Dr. Frankenstein would harbor a monster. Eric does some fancy horse riding as he goes to cut off the mob. Eric stops the mob just outside of Ludwig's house. They discredit Eric because he's in love with Ilsa. They give Eric a little time to talk with Ludwig. Martha lets him in and he tells Elsa he must see her father. Eric says that if Ludwig wants the protection of his office, he must be frank with him. The villagers are getting out of hand, Doctor. If you expect the protection of my office, you'll have to be frank with me. Yeah, Frankenstein with him. Eric breaks down the lie about Kettering leaving town. Ludwig and Eric go to the room where Bomer is sitting with the now awake monster. Ludwig confesses that the monster killed Kettering, but he has made it right by putting the doctor's brain in the monster. Bomer is looking like the cat that ate the canary. The villagers shift back into mob mode and head into the house. Ludwig begins questioning the monster, whom he believes to be Kettering. The monster answers in the voice of Igor. The monster announces that he is Igor. Igor is ranting about his power and life. Ludwig goes after Bomer, but Igor stops him. He says he will not kill Ludwig because his father gave him life and Ludwig gave him a brain. The mob begins breaking into the house. Igor calls for Bomer to deploy the sleeping gas throughout the house. Eric escapes the room, locking everyone else inside. The monster breaks through the first door and is working on the second as Eric warns the villagers not to enter the gas. They run right into the gas and start coughing. Elsa returns close time to her father as the gas enters the foyer. Eric and Ilsa go back down to rescue Ludwig, who is trapped with Igor and Bomer in a sealed room. 
Elsa passes out and Eric takes her back up. Suddenly, Igor in the monster's body calls for Bomer. Igor is blind. Ludwig explains that Igor's blood type differs from the monster and Kettering's and he will be permanently blind. In a rage, the monster throws Bomer into some electrical equipment. Bomer's death is shocking. Igor slash the monster crashes around and creates a massive fire. He slowly burns until a couple of burning beams fall on him. Ludwig would appear to be dead as well, but the monster is tough. Elsa and Eric walk away into the morning sunrise. Hey, I want to give a special shout out to Michigan S and Rambling RJ. If you have questions or comments, send them to me. I love hearing from you. Conclusion. When anyone is asked to imitate the monster, they extend both arms straight out from the shoulders and wobble forward. Have you ever wondered why? Well, a scene was shot for today's movie showing the smoldering monster walking across a field. Of course the monster survived the fire. The next time the monster appeared was in the following year in Frankenstein Meets the Wolfman 1943. The audience was unaware that the arms and the stumbling was due to the blindness caused in the prior movie, in today's movie. Thus, when we imitate the monster, we often copy his blind walking. World famous short summary, Buddy Trip ends badly. If you enjoy the show, please subscribe and leave a review where you get your podcast or videos. It really helps the show get found. As a technical note, references and citations are listed for each show on the site at classicmoviereb.com. Beware the moors. There'll be some boxes pop up here. One box has a movie specially recommended for you. The other box has a playlist related to today's show. Just for the month of October, we have all the Frankenstein movies combined into one playlist.